How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be doing an electric start to manual recoil start conversion on a Briggs & Stratton 725 series engine. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So in the shop today, we are working on a Yardworks self-propel lawnmower that was purchased at Canadian Tire here in Canada in 2020. So this lawnmower is only two years old. Powering this lawnmower is a Briggs & Stratton 725IS, which stands for instant start. So as you'll notice, there is no manual recoil pull cord on this thing. It can only be started using a push button that sends power from the battery there down to this electric starter. So you could imagine if you have an issue with your battery charger, the battery or the electric starter itself, there is no way you can start this engine using your push button start. You have to remove all of the plastic covers and then start this thing with a drill and a socket, which isn't all that user friendly. And unfortunately, one of those three issues did happen to my customer. He said he's had nothing but problems in the past two years on this mower. And after only two years, the charger failed to charge the battery. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how to convert one of these electric start systems to manual pull cord start. So in front of me, I have pretty much everything we'll need to do this conversion, but I first wanted to take you through the issue with the battery here. So on the battery, there is going to be a negative and a positive. So you can take a multimeter if you want and probe the negative and the positive to see what your battery is putting out. This battery only has 0.37 volts coming out of it. Reading on the back of this sticker here, it says it should be at least 10.8 volts. So this thing pretty much hasn't charged. So we then went over to the battery charger, which also has the negative and positive terminals here. And once again, using the voltmeter, we tested this on both AC and DC to see what the output was. And the numbers did not add up to the sticker on the back, which says the output should be 12.45 volts right there. So unfortunately, my customer would have to replace both the charger and the battery, which gets super expensive. Here in Canada, the battery part number 593559, that's the original number, superseded by a 597187, costs $188 tax included. And the charger, part number 593561, costs $178 for a total cost of $366 if you had to replace both of these, which my customer probably would have. Now my customer did bring this to me not to fix but to sell because he says it was just a headache and he didn't want it anymore. He went out and bought a completely different lawnmower. So we purchased this lawnmower for a very reasonable price. We do know that the engine runs and that the self-propelled drive system works just fine because we did remove the plastic covers and did start this engine with a drill just to make sure that everything was operational. Now, in order to remove this plastic cover here, you will have to access some screws. And to do that, we'll have to remove this center plastic cover, which just snaps in using these little tabs here. There's some on the sides and then there is one on the back here. So once you pop that off, you can pretty much just pry it up and out. You will now have access at the lower plastic cover. Now the tools needed for this conversion are very simple. Starting from the left, you're going to need a number two Phillips screwdriver. We're going to need a T25 Torx screwdriver and also a 5 16th bit driver. Once you remove that plastic cover there, it will expose the two T25 Torx screws that you will have to remove. Once you remove those two Torx screws from the back there, there is going to be a plastic tab that hooks into the plastic recoil housing itself. So what you're gonna do is move this back and then lift up and I'll show you what the tab looks like right there. And that hooks into that little cutout right there, which we are going to be removing next. Now, I personally will be putting these two plastic pieces into a parts bin just in case I get a customer in the future that comes in with one of them damaged, but we will not be using these plastic pieces because they do have the cutout for the battery. Instead, we're going to be swapping over to this plastic cover that has the molded top section that will fit the recoil pull start. So we're gonna get into part numbers in a second. I just wanted to point out that you will need to keep the two screws that hold these covers into place. So with the plastic covers now removed, we have access at our three 
5 16 screws that hold the electric start recoil housing into position. So using the 5 16 bit driver, we can remove those three screws. And because many of these new Briggs & Stratton engines are designed similar to one another, we will be able to reuse those three 5 16 screws that we just took out to install the manual recoil starter. Next up, we're going to disconnect the electrical harness that goes up to the battery slot there. And now we can completely remove that plastic cover. And this is where you can see the crankshaft nut that holds the flywheel down. That's what we used to spin the engine around in a clockwise rotation with a socket attached to a bit driver on a drill, just so that we confirmed this engine did in fact run. And just like the plastic covers, you can discard this piece entirely or keep it in a parts bin if you want. Now at this point, if you wanted to do the least amount of work possible, we could install the new recoil starter and plastic cover. And this engine would turn over by pulling the cord. It would work 100%. We already tried it just to make sure that this conversion would work and that I could film this video. However, since we're not going to be using the electric starter anymore, and I know that the electric starter worked before my customer had the battery and charger issues, we might as well remove this electric starter and I can put that into a parts bin as well. So if I ever get one of these engines in that has a bad starter, I can sell that and make a little bit of money. This electric starter is held on by two 10 millimeter bolts there and there. And to gain access at the one on the top, you might have to just push in this little muffler guard there so you can get your socket in there. So I'm just going to use a 10 mil socket on my Milwaukee Impact to remove that. Now, if you want, you can put those bolts into your bolt bin because there is no heat shield or anything else that those starter bolts hold on. So you don't have to put them back in. Now you still use the control lever to run the engine and then let off of it to stop the engine. And it does have its own kill switch for grounding the coil right there at the back. And off of that, there's going to be two female connectors on wires that you can simply unplug from those spade terminals. You can then disconnect the terminal that goes up to the push button start. And we have now successfully separated the electric starter from this engine. This electric starter, by the way, just so you're all aware, part number 84005205. List price here in Canada, $363 just for that electric starter. And if you'll see here, wiring is not included. So it does not come with this little wiring harness there. That's just for the starter alone. So I could easily sell that for $100, no questions asked. So that's definitely going into a parts bin for a later day. And since we're not going to be using the electric starter anymore, we can now remove the push button start using the Phillips head screwdriver to remove those two screws there. You can set aside both the push button starter and the two screws into a parts bin or simply throw them out into the trash. We will not be reusing them. So at this point, we have successfully removed everything that makes this engine electric start and we are now ready to convert it over to manual pull start. So I'll bring you over to the workbench and show you what you'll need. So you're gonna need these three items to successfully convert an electric start over to a manual start. That's going to be the manual pull cord recoil housing a new plastic cover, which you don't really need, but if you wanna complete the design of the engine and have it protected by something, then you should have one. And you will also need the pull cord rope guide, as they call it, or the little rope handle holder that bolts through the top of the handlebars. So with that being said, let's look at some part numbers and some prices, because this is where things can get a little expensive. So first up is the recoil pull start. The part number for that is going to be a 594062. There's going to be some differences. If you want the OEM one, you're going to be spending about $90 to get that direct from Briggs & Stratton. However, there are ones on Amazon Canada coming from China. They're going to be aftermarket for approximately $30. So there's a big savings there. However, you're going to have to make a decision whether you want to go with an aftermarket one from Amazon or eBay or get an OEM one from Briggs & Stratton. Again, to complete this conversion, you really only need this part because you're going to be reusing these bolts here to hold that down. And you'll also need the pull cord guide, which I'll show you next. The pull cord guide right there that holds the pull cord rope handle up on the handlebars. It's just a looped piece of steel with a plastic wing nut. 
that is going to be $19 here on Amazon Canada. You might even be able to find them cheaper. This is a 586-122-501 for this one right here. That was just one that I Google searched. I don't think it's the original OEM Briggs & Stratton one, so you might have to do a little digging on that. As for the plastic cover, you want to try to get one that is the same numbers as your engine. So you guys can see we had a 725 and this is going to be a 7.25. It doesn't really matter, but at least you kind of know how much torque or horsepower the engine makes. As for this cover here, the OEM price from Briggs & Stratton can range anywhere from $95 to $105 here in Canada. The part number is going to be 594 Five five zero. Now, you can see where things start to get a little expensive. If you went the OEM recoil and OEM plastic cover, you're going to be spending about $205. Again, that's under the $366 total that the battery and charger cost, and you'll have the peace of mind that you'll never have to replace a battery or a charger in the future. You'll just have to make sure that you keep the recoil rope pull cord in good condition and as you guys can see here we've already replaced it with some Stens True Blue Diamond commercial grade pull cord. On the flip side of that if you went the Amazon route where you got the aftermarket recoil and the OEM cover you're spending about $125 which still isn't that bad compared to the $366 total for the battery and charger but again just $30 plus one of these little pull cord rope guides that you could probably steal off of a junk lawnmower that you had, for the cost of approximately $30, you can do this conversion. So let's get right to it. We don't even have to replace the cup that goes inside of the recoil starter because Briggs & Stratton included one, even though this is an electric start engine. Now we can see there is some debris in there, so I'll just use the compressor to clean that out. Once again, because Briggs & Stratton builds all of these 725 engines very similarly, that just pops into place. We can now get those 5 16th screws in. We'll get these tightened up. The new plastic cover we have has the same tab that locks into the little cutout on the recoil there. So that's gonna pop into place. The only thing you'll have to do is pull the handle for the pull cord through this opening first just to make it a little easier to drop this into position. So with the cover still loose you can push back on the top and pull forward and just kind of wiggle that thing around and that is now locked in on the front tab there. You can see I can't lift that up but it's still loose at the back so we can now take the two torque screws that we saved from the other cover and install them. So we'll tighten these down. I mean it doesn't get much more simple than this guys everything is interchangeable on these engines which i got to admit briggs and stratton did a good job with that but the fact that they didn't include a recoil pull start with the electric starter i just don't know what they were thinking on that one next up we can install the pull cord guide or the little handle holder and check that out the hole is already there once again everything with these lawnmowers totally interchangeable, remove the push button start, install this right here. We'll run the pull cord through the loop first before we tighten this up. Go ahead and engage the control lever to make it easier to pull on the pull cord rope. And then you can tighten that up and check this out guys. Doesn't get much better than that. Electric start to manual pull cord conversion complete. Now, like I said, I did purchase this off of my customer for a very fair price, and we were lucky enough to have a scrap engine out back that a previous customer dropped off. Unfortunately, ran it low on oil, seized the engine. We ended up taking the cover and the recoil off of that machine and also took the pull cord guide off of a scrap mower out back. So total cost for us, nothing. All of this was spare parts that we have. Now, obviously, we will be selling this mower for a very fair price. This mower is only two years old, so it's still considered new. The engine has very low hours on it, and we now don't have to worry about chargers, batteries, or electric starters failing. This engine is guaranteed to start first pull every time you pull it because it's coming from Eliminator Performance. Now, obviously, before we do sell it, we will be fully servicing it. It'll be getting an oil change. It'll be getting a new spark plug, air filter, and a blade sharpen, as well as some fresh 91-octane ethanol-free fuel. This is a self-propel, three-in-one, so you can side discharge, mulch, or bag if you want. So with that being said, let's take this thing outside and fire it up.
So there you have it, electric start to manual start conversion on this Yardworks self-propel mower with a Briggs & Stratton 725 series engine. Super simple. And if you guys were wondering what a mower like this costs, I ran the model number into Canadian Tire's website and the product listing popped up. I'll put it up on screen. $700 is what my customer spent on this lawnmower two years ago. And like he said, he had nothing but problems with the electric starting system ever since he got it. Pretty hard to imagine that a charger, a battery, and the electric starter themselves cost more than the entire lawnmower. But that's the way of the future. Or is it? Well, that's going to be it for today's video, a super informational one, because I know that many of you out there may not be familiar with these new Briggs & Stratton engines that only have the electric starter on them. So if you face a situation like I did where either the battery or the electric charger stops working, or maybe even the electric starter doesn't work anymore, you cannot start your engine unless you take the top cover off and use a drill, which works, but it's not all that user-friendly. But following the steps in this video, you'll be able to convert it to a manual pull cord, plus you won't have to worry about replacing a battery or a charger in the future. So with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up, you know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos i upload every single week so be sure to stop on by next week check channel for new content and as always guys thanks for watching